Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years. Hi, I'm Cherry Johnson with Watauga County Arts Council, and as you may know, one of the things we love to do is to showcase artists of all descriptions. Uh, we like to bring in painters, we like to bring in musicians, we like to bring in even dancers and, and things like that, and one of the art forms that we celebrate pretty often is uh, writing, the art of writing, and I have with me today an author. Uh, Lisa Brown is a uh, local author who I've worked with before because you had a previous book that we showcased maybe a year and a half ago, something That's like right. that. That's right, yes. Um, and that book is on my uh, left right in front of me. It's called Another F Word, mm -hmm. not the F word you're thinking about. Um, and that book I just found out is, was your third book. You actually That's have right. a writing history. Tell me about your history. I do. Well, it, I'd have to go back to when I was about seven years old, but I know mm -hmm. you don't want me to oh, go I'm back that Oh, I'm good with that. that. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I did a, a uh, neighborhood newspaper. Did you? I got a little printing set, you know, with the hand yeah. blocks and uh -huh. the Type print setting. pads. Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, I went around the neighborhood and listened to all the gossip, and I put it in my <laughs> newspaper until the calls started coming in to my mother. And she had to explain to me that just because it was news didn't mean you had to put it in the newspaper. So that was a good <laughs> lesson for a budding writer, let me tell I'm not you. I'm sure all of them know that. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> You know, when, when you're at your mother's whim, you learn pretty quickly. That's pretty clever of So you. I started uh -huh. back that far, literally, and I've been writing ever since. Now, you told me that you uh, wanted to be a journalist. I did. I wanted to be a journalist, but we didn't have the money for me to go to a college that had a journalism mm -hmm. major. So uh, we managed to get me to a state teacher's college. And which was fine because I became a teacher and, mm -hmm. and was one for so 17 plus years. I taught history. Ah. And um, which also involves journalism. a lot of writing. <laughs> well, wasn't quite able to do that at that point. And so after teaching, I changed careers and went into public relations, which mm -hmm. gave me even more of a chance to write. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, I was a columnist for a business magazine and ah. eventually when I retired from paying work mm -hmm. I got to do what I had wanted to do for years and that was to write books. And you said in four years? Is that what you told me? In five years I've written four books. I knew I'd heard four somewhere. Okay, that's pretty fast for an author, I think. Well, you know, all these years it was inside waiting to come out and it just once, once it started, I opened it just the door <laughs> It's Is there more? Coming. Yes, I think there's some more in there. Okay, so you're not quite there. sure yet what the next one will be, but I'm sure there is another book or well, two that, or three. That does bring up a really good question. Okay, first let's talk about you had the first book. You didn't even write it into your name, which I'm not sure why you did that. Well, it was a humorous memoir of my first 18 months living in Appalachia. Mm -hmm. And like a lot of newcomers, I stumbled over local customs and language and foods, you know. Yeah. Um, and I, in order to, to keep myself comfortable with being in a very different environment, because I grew up in the New York metro area. It's quite a so, contrast. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, I began sending weekly updates from the holler, is what I called them, to friends, and they kept saying, you have got to put this stuff into a book. It's so funny. <laughs> so I did. I got to read this one. <laughs> and somebody in my writer's group, High Country Writers, someone who's from here, said to me, you better not put your name on that book or somebody might burn you out. And I thought, well, you Ooh. know, I don't want that to happen. So I used a pen name for that book. And actually, I mean, there's nothing in there that local people would be offended by. I really poke fun at us uh -huh. for our... For not understanding it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Now, what's the name of that book? It's called Real Country from the Fast Track to Appalachia. Okay, so that's and I have to confess, to at the time when I gave it that title, I didn't know how to pronounce Appalachia. You called it Appalachia. I did. Uh-huh. That's what we called that in the northern part uh -huh. of this country, so... Yes. But I've learned. 
Well, you know, and that's something that, that folks do have to learn if they're going to mm -hmm. live here, is, is we all call it Appalachia. And I get yeah. such a kick out of talking to people who are new or visiting the area, and I say, oh, no, it's not pronounced that way. It's Appalachia. That's how we say it. <laughs> You're so, one of us now. <laughs> well, I'm trying, still trying. Now, the second book was what? The second book was called Family Secrets, Three Generations, and it's a coming-of-age story about a girl growing up, and, you know, she's got some dysfunction in her family, and she desperately needs someone to mentor her. And she reaches out, I know I'm going to sound like a kook now, she <laughs> reaches out to her dead grandmother, whom she never knew. Mm. And they have this telepathic communication that guides her through adolescence. Interesting. Now, what made you write a book like that? I have that? no idea. You know, I was afraid you were going to ask Well, you know, that. I've talked to several authors who tell me that they start a book with an idea, and then it's like the book starts to write itself. Yes. That is my experience. Mm -hmm. Not every writer does it the same mm -hmm. way. For me, I, I have a general storyline, and then I develop the characters. And they kind of take over. Now, sometimes I don't go where they want me to go. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we argue. Mm -hmm. But more often than not, I will follow the characters, and the storyline can change. Wow. It's a fascinating process. I used to hear people talk about this who wrote fiction, because uh -huh. most of the writing I did until I wrote these books was nonfiction. Technical writing. Mm -hmm. And I would hear people say that and think, these people are crazy, <laughs> you know. Someone once said she sits in a bathtub, and it comes to her, and I thought, oh, right. You know, <laughs> I sit in the bathtub, and books don't come to me. <laughs> but uh, there, Wrong bathtub. <laughs> there, yeah, it must be. There, there is truth to this business of characters taking Interesting. over. That's really fascinating to me. And then when you got to another F word, you had other reasons for writing that book. I did. I had an experience right here in Boone, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, where I saw a bumper sticker that, uh, it, well, it, it said Santa hates Jewish kids. And I was appalled by it shocked actually and coming from the New York area I don't shock easily but that one got me and and I was I brooded about it for days and I thought you know how do adults do things like that that can be so hurtful to kids mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what came out of it was my desire to write a story about things adults do to children to hurt them. And I picked a protagonist who I figured was probably one of the best to illustrate, and that was a gay boy. Mm -hmm. And that's how another F word was written. And in that story, his father is the worst his bully of all. His father is the primary bully. Mm -hmm. Not only does his father bully him, but his father's behavior causes the marriage, his parents' marriage, to break up. Mm -hmm. And after that, he abandons his son for years. Mm. So fast forward now to Family of Choice, okay. which is the sequel. Although, you know, I mean, someone could read it without reading the first book. Right. But I do warn people, if you read Family of Choice before another F word, you will ruin a major plot twist in another F word. Yeah. But you know, that's so read it in order if you're going to read choice. both of them. <laughs> um, and, and Family of Choice deals with several issues that I think are universal to all of us, really. Mm -hmm. And that is, if someone has hurt us really badly, can we find it in ourselves to forgive them? Mm. Do they deserve a second chance? You know, and the answer is going to be different for, right. for you and right. for me and others. Um, but this book deals with Rory, the character. He's now grown. He's a physician. Mm -hmm. And he's living, he's moved from Tennessee, where the first book is set. He's living now in Baltimore, Maryland. Mm -hmm. And he has a partner, and the partner has two young children. And Rory has to decide whether or not to legally adopt these two children. And when he wrestles with that decision, all this stuff from his past comes up. Mm -hmm. And he, he realizes he's hesitant because he doesn't know if he's good fatherhood material. He didn't have a very good role model. Mm -hmm. And so he's got three new F words to deal with. Fatherhood, 
family and forgiveness. And his challenge is, will he, can he forgive his father mm -hmm. if he chooses to go down that route? Right. Will he consider letting him back into his family? That's a big decision. It's a very big decision. And, you know, it's really about second chances. Right. And I think it's also about forgiveness. It and, is and about, about forgiveness. And then we were, you and I were just talking to Jonathan Roten, and he quoted a quote about, drinking up a, a, a poison and expecting the other person to die, you know. Right. And forgiveness is, eats at you yes, very strongly. Yes, it does. It does. So I gather Rory had, had, this had been eating at him unbeknownst to him. Yes. He didn't realize to what degree it was eating at right. him. Right. So he has to grapple with that. Mm -hmm. and exactly. With, yeah. And, and that's, that's a tough mm -hmm. decision to make. And then make, He actually, he is thrown into contact with his father when they jointly inherit property. Oh. So he has to deal with them one way or another, either face to face, through a lawyer, or somehow. Mm -hmm. But they have to resolve some issues around this property. So even without the catalyst of having to make a choice about adopting the children, he still would have had to have figured out how he was gonna deal with his father. Probably because mm -hmm. He realizes, as we all do at some point or other, if you can't cope with the anger and question whether you can forgive, it's you keep running into a brick wall. Mm -hmm. At different points in your life, mm -hmm. there's going to be that obstacle. And if you can't breach it, mm -hmm. you, you risk not having a very fulfilling life. Well, without asking you to give away the end of it, uh, can I say? Can we say that Rory finds a way to deal? I mean, did he, he struggle through that? He does struggle. A lot of the story is about the struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, he does eventually figure out whether he wants there to forgive okay. or not. Mm -hmm. So I think I've there covered without it without giving the, it the away. Whole story, right. right. I think this is fascinating, and I think it's, it's uh, as I was saying to you earlier, I think it's, it's the big story is, is about humanity mm -hmm. and about what we all have to deal with, regardless of our life choices in terms of who our family is right. or, or who, what lifestyle we're picking. We have to deal with these big issues. Yeah. I can't think of anybody I know, myself included, who hasn't benefited because we got a second chance. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I've had... I'm probably up to my hundredth second chance right. by now. Um, and I think that's true for most adults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we start as children learning about, you know, forgiving a friend who hurt our feelings right. or forgiving a parent who has a shortcoming, you know, and, and we carry those lessons through our life. And of course, um, bullying right. was a primary subject of another F word. And bullying always, and I don't say it always often, but I'm going to say it now, bullying always leaves scars. Mm. Mm -hmm. I had an experience where I still, you know, find it hard to, to comprehend. I wrote another F word. I was contacted by a woman I hadn't seen in 50 years. Wow. We had been childhood friends, mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. through high school close. You know, we double dated, we went to the same parties, we hung right. out. And she had read that book and she said to me, this book brought back so much. And she told me about a situation that existed while we were friends, that she had been bullied so badly in junior high school, what we called it then, that for a year and a half she didn't eat lunch. Because this bully would steal her lunch money Huh. And then when she tried bringing her lunch to school, the bully would come to the locker and actually threatened her with a knife. Oh, my goodness. And said, give me your lunch. I was a close friend of hers. I didn't know any of this. Wow. Until she sent me an email. And I picked up the phone. You know, I found her phone number, and I called her. And I said, why didn't you tell me? And she said, I didn't tell anybody. She was terrified. And at the time, I was going around talking to a lot of groups, uh -huh, particularly uh -huh. kids, about bullying. And I asked if I could use that story, and she said yes. First group I talked to was a group of kids out in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh -huh. 
and one of the boys said, you know the bully. And I said, I do, did. And you know the victim. Would you try to bring them together to bring some kind of understanding, reconciliation? And I said, I have to think about it. And I did think about it, and I thought, you know, this is not a decision for me to make. Mm -hmm. I went back to the woman who was the victim, right. and I just told her about the boy's question. And instantly, she I could hear the fear coming back after 50 years. She said, not on your life. I want nothing to do with her. It just so happened through mutual friends, I knew where the bully lived. Uh-huh. And presumably she, you know, quit uh, doing the that, hopefully. Yeah, uh -huh. But the fear was still there, and bullying leaves scars. So Rory, in Family of Choice, yes, he's a physician, but he bears those scars from childhood bullying. You know, another interesting approach to this whole topic would be the perspective of the bully, mm -hmm. and especially the bully that grows up, and how do they deal with their past. And that is in this book. Really? Yes. Hmm. So father has to deal with his own. Yep. And often the bully has as many scars, maybe exactly. just as bad mm -hmm. as the victim. And how does a bully live with themselves when they realize what they've been doing? Yeah. Or they've known all that's, along, but they finally accept. That's very, very true. Good point. Mm. Well, all of us have had some kind of experience with bullying, whether we've mm -hmm. known about it, been a victim of it, been True. the bully, whatever. You know, all of us know that story. Yep. And I'm wondering if you feel like that by, I mean, recently it's been a very hot news topic. You've done a lot of speaking about it. There have been other people working on the same topic. Uh, do you think that we'll ever really change it? I hate to sound a negative note, but... There it seems to be something in human behavior mm -hmm. where people who themselves have been hurt in some right. way or another can only feel better temporarily if they've got somebody else that they can stand on, mm -hmm. step on mm -hmm. would be more appropriate. Um, I see this too often. I see it in government. I see it, you know, you name right. the venue. Right. I really don't think it's ever going to end. What I think we can do, particularly with young people, is raise awareness. Mm -hmm. You know, true, it's hard to make a 10 or 12 year old child really feel compassion for somebody who is very easy for them to pick on right. for whatever reason. Right. But most kids, you know, you can get to them and at least get them to understand, you know, you are inflicting pain. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can get them to put themselves in the shoes of the victim, right? you're inflicting pain. And, I mean, suicide among kids. Well, and I was thinking what you just now said about the... Is rampant. The, talk, talking about the bully, but looking at the eight-year-old that is being bullied, yeah. and will they really realize that they can talk about it? Yeah. You know, or are they intimidated like your friend mm -hmm. and don't talk about it yeah. and carry this? The important thing for us as mm -hmm. adults is to be aware. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are signs. Right. You know, if you're a parent and you see a kid's grades go downhill or you see them have stomach aches every Sunday night or, you know, a yeah. number of mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. you know something's wrong. Right. And something's happening, maybe not in your home, but something's happening in school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I mean, school's a place we all go and we get enriched and, and it helps us be successful as adults. But middle school years are rough, <laughs> are tough. <laughs> you are. know, when you think back to your own experience, uh -huh. mm -hmm. these kids can be brutally cruel to one mm -hmm. another. And with internet, it's even worse. Facebook and all the other other social media, there's no break from it. Mm -hmm. They go home, and it's not over when they get off the school bus. It's right there. Right. It's on their phone. It's on the computer. You know, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we as adults need to make sure that the kids know they can talk to us. Mm. 
and not judge. Right. right. It's too common a story that when a child does tell an adult that they're being bullied, the response they get makes it worse. You know, oh, toughen up. Right. You know, mm -hmm. man up or woman up or whatever right. expression uh -huh. they uh -huh. use, you know, or to excuse the behavior of the bullies as, you know, girls will be girls or boys will be girls. Uh, boys, boys will be, be boys. boys. Girls, incidentally, in middle school, I think, are worse bullies I sometimes. I would completely agree with that. I've seen a lot they of They use mm -hmm. social bullying, exclusion. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll talk about a party that they're invited to that they know Mary's not invited to in front of Mary. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. That is so painful for yeah. kids and some of them who don't have anybody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And then you move to the, the scenario of the, of the grown-ups who have to deal with those emotions from wherever, or, right. not just grown-ups, but, but especially grown-ups. Yes. Uh, and I think that all of us carry baggage from some sort from our childhood, from oh, our sure. growing up, and we have to learn how to cope with that because you can't forever bury it. You can't bury it, and the, the ideal thing is to be able to take it and turn it as, into a wisdom mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you can use in a, in a productive way. Exactly. Exactly. So, so mm. I feel like I ought to be lying on this couch. It's like <laughs> therapy session. <laughs> I was just thinking this is really getting interesting. <laughs> so, but well, yeah, you know, uh -huh. I've had to do a lot of research. Yes. Uh, in in doing both of these mm -hmm. books, and it's been an eye opener. As someone who taught for seventeen years, I thought I pretty well understood the whole bullying dynamic. I had a lot to learn. Interesting. And I tried through fiction to pass it along to mm -hmm. the readers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, question about the, uh, the book. Now, the partner, to what degree does the partner get involved in the forgiveness question? Well, partners always have choices. Do we support mm -hmm. our other half? Um, do we walk away from it? You know, and everything in between. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the partner is the biological parent of the two children right. in family of choice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so, they're his. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He wants his partner to be their legal parent. I mean, for a very practical reason. Right. If something happens to him. There needs to be somebody. He wants up. his partner to raise those kids. But understanding what this partner's dealing with. It's, well, the what issues, helps yeah. in this uh, story is the partner's also a physician mm -hmm. and one who works with children. Ah. So he's maybe a little bit more in tune with this type of thing than some other adults Perhaps might be. Perhaps it influences be. his career. Yeah. And how he deals with his own. Yep. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, well, you can get mighty deep. Well, <laughs> I do. That's why after a book comes out, especially like this, I have to take a breather for a while. Yes, I can understand you that. You know, it's kind of like the uh, the sherbet they serve between courses of a big meal, uh -huh. clear the palate. Right. I have to clear my head sometimes. So when you have a sequel, does that mean you didn't no. fully clear your head? I did. <laughs> I knew when I wrote that one there was probably going to be a sequel. And would there be a sequel to this one? No. Okay. So well, the next one is a different page. Something totally different. Is it tapping you on the shoulder yet? S little nudge here and there. I can't wait to hear what happens. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the first to know. So, and also you mentioned in passing the high country writers. Yes. And I want to salute them because that oftentimes it's folks who have flirted with the idea of writing and mm -hmm. haven't really gotten there Very or true. don't have the nerve to try or have been secret writers and haven't yeah. brought it out who want to explore their ability to write that you folks are working with. That's and, very yeah. true. I honestly, when I first joined High Country Writers, what, nine or so years ago, mm -hmm. I didn't consider myself an author. I had written lots. You right. know, I right. ghost wrote for various organizations I wrote for. I wrote articles in magazines, newspapers. I was a columnist. But I didn't really consider myself a writer. And I had never written fiction. 
So it was a whole new frontier. And most, mm -hmm. not most, a lot of the people in high country writers write fiction. Mm -hmm. And I would listen to them and think, oh, anybody can make up stuff. Well, <laughs> when I wrote The uh, Family Secrets, Three Generations, mm -hmm. my first novel, boy, that was tough. Yeah. It's not as easy as you might think to just free yourself, let go of the ground, and just take off into fantasy. Hmm. You know, usually when people get to that point, we have them diagnosed right. with something. Right. <laughs> um, but to be able to do it is, is not that easy. So how did High Country Writers help you with that? High Country Writers is an organization that really encourages mm -hmm. its members. And we, we put our work out there for mm -hmm. one another to critique. Right. For me, that is the greatest value of belonging to the group. Um, and sometimes, you know, you hear some pretty harsh stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's why you do it. Right. You don't do it so people can say, oh, you're a wonderful writer. I mean, you know, you can look in the mirror and do that whether it's true yeah. or not. But they, these are experienced writers, all different levels, and they'll tell you what's good or not good about what mm -hmm. you're doing. And beyond that, they offer classes, that did. Mm -hmm. instructional sessions that are the how-to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of the craft. So it, it's a great organization. I, I think it was one of the best things I did when I moved here. That's great. Just to find that That's group. Great. That group uh, meets uh, sometimes at the library and sometimes at the Blue Ridge Art Space, depending on what they're doing. Right. And you can contact them. They have a website, High Country they Writers. They do. Right. And uh, you can also, if you're if you're lost and you need to find the High Country Writers, give me a call and I'll connect you to the right mm -hmm. people. But uh, I've been really um, pleased to have that connection. Well, it's wonderful mm -hmm. to have the connection with the Arts Council. I mean, a lot of us have our books for sale at, at absolutely, Art Space. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you've already, you're going to have your, all both of your books available with I us, will. too? I yes. will. I will do mm -hmm. that, yes. We're, this is pressure on, on the spot. Right. No, no, I'm <laughs> remiss. I should have done it a long time ago. Well, I think it's wonderful that we have these books available, and, and I want to have you come back. You have done some book signings with us, but I want to pick a a really busy second Saturday and have you come sign some r more books sure, with us. Sure, be Maybe happy to. Maybe even do some reading sometime. I'd be happy to. I think that'd be kind of fun. We tried a reading at our last second Saturday and it went very well. Oh, good. So we might just be flirting a little more with that idea. Okay. So, okay. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing so much about your books. Well, thank and, you and for having me. It's always a pleasure, Cherry. Thank you. Oh, and we didn't say one thing. Where can you get the books? The book is available at Amazon.com, both books, in paperback format and As Kindle. As yeah. Yep. And also, when you go to Amazon.com, I'm going to throw a little sidetrack in here, uh, there's something called Amazon Smile. Amazon Smile is an aspect of Amazon.com. You don't lose your Prime membership or your connections or even your cart that you might have in Amazon. But if you hook up with the Watauga County Arts Council through Amazon Smile, then every dollar you spend, we get a small percentage of that dollar, and that really, mm -hmm. really can help us. So I encourage you to link to the Watauga County Arts Council through Amazon Smile and then go and purchase a couple of books. Great. Thank so. you. All right, thanks again. And join us. Uh, check the Arts Council's website, Watauga-Arts.org, for information about this and so much more. Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years.